Nigerians Nigeria. Naira don't fall out. Man, Naira Mali now don't don't talk in your own side of the story for this Mubad by matter. Let us hear from Naira Mali. Tell us in the comment section: Is it lying? Is this damage control? Or you don't already do what you want to do before it come out? Or you don't plan what you want to do before it come out? Make could not listen to Naira Mali. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Over the last two weeks, there's been a lot of speculation, accusation, allegations around the death of a young Nigerian rapper, Ilirio Lua Oladimeji Aloba. His death has captivated the world. His face has been splashed on the mega screen at New York's Times Square. And virtually every major international media, CNN, BBC, The New York Times, Washington Post, Enemy has written about him. And the world has been captivated. What happened to this young man? How did he die? What were the circumstances leading to his death? Now, there's been a lot of speculations, accusations about his death. And they all seem to center around a young man by the name of Aziz Adesino Fashola. And facts seem to have just mixed in with conjecture. And today, I want Nigerians and the whole world to know the truth. And that's why we're interviewing the man known as Naira Mali, Aziz, addition of Fashola. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, without further ado, because I'm not going to build around the bush, Nigerians want to know the truth. And so we're going to go straight and directly to the point. With all the speculations, accusations, and allegations surrounding, surrounding the death of Ilerio Lua or Ladiwe Jaloba, people have said, and it's been reported, that you had a hand in his death. Now, I'm asking you directly, whether indirectly or directly, did you have any hand in the circumstances that led to the death of the young man known as Mubad? No, definitely no. Do you want to elaborate? I want to elaborate. Um, yeah. I've been out of Nigeria from the first thirty first of August. Um, I've been with my family up to day. I haven't been to Nigeria. That's one. Two. Um, he's left Malian music since I don't know the particular day, but since twenty twenty two, he's left Malian music since. I have, we have not stopped him from dropping music or anything. He's been working with one PR or something like that since ever since. So when I heard about his death, it was shocking to me. I was high with the country as well. So um, I have to find out what's wrong with him just as much as everybody's trying to find out. So I'm just finding out what's wrong with him online. I'm seeing all the lies too, but we have to kind of focus on the fact like who was it with, how did he die? If you say um if you're blaming me, how did I kill him? I have um nothing to do with his death whatsoever. I was so hurt when I hurt myself. Nothing whatsoever to do with his death. I mean, if you look at the laws of physics, if you are away you're currently in Europe. I mean, if you are some 5,000 miles away from Nigeria, I'm just, it's, it's hard to see how you could be directly responsible for his death. That's why I said directly or indirectly. Now, he recorded a video. And in that video, he made some startling allegations. He said that, I mean, it was almost prophetic. He said, if anything should happen to him, that the world should hold you responsible. Now, why would he say that? today i don't understand i don't um i don't know why i tried to um get him help when he freaked out like that i wasn't even in the country when he made that video i was out of the country again when did he make the video do you know when he made the video um i'm sure he was doing the ndla i'm not really good at time he was doing the ndla time when they came okay but at the end the LA, they've since uh, released a statement saying that they arrested five people and that Ilerio lua was not among those arrested um looking at the video again i was getting information like i said i was out of the country 
So I was getting information from everybody that was there um, during the incident, like trying to send someone to the to NDLA before I go back. I go back the next day. When I go back, they said Mubad was not there. Mubad was not among the people. Mubad, I didn't have to bail Mubad out anyway when I go back. So I had to, it was only Zeno and the rest. I had to bail, bail out. Mubad was already out. So it was that paranoia. It was when it was out. Zeno was still in with NDLA at this time when he made that video. I wasn't around. I was outside Nigeria. When he made that video saying, if you die, they should hold Nagamali and the Malians. So when I got back, I did ask him and speak to him. So to you, you actually, you met him physically when you got back? Yeah, when I got back. Oh, sorry, my phone. When I got back, I met him and I spoke to him to try to find out what's, what was wrong. But he said um, he doesn't understand. He apologized. Um, he, he apologized said, to you? Yes, he apologized. Do you have proof of that? Do you have proof, like maybe a recording or a witness or anything? Yeah, the second, like there's, um, I have videos of that. I have videos of that, me speaking to him. Like the only reason I had the video again is because there's another time when I was in America and his girl called me to say um um he locked himself in the toilet and he wanted to kill himself or something like that. So I called him from there and I kind of recorded the conversation. I'm like, why do you want to kill yourself? You're king if your family is stressing you out. Because this time he was with his family. Well, all, all his families are around him. So I tell him, your family is stressing you out. Just tell them to go chill, your king, do what you want to do. Don't kill yourself. If you kill yourself now, what do you want people to say? You just made video not long ago saying if you die, they should hold Nagamali. What do you want people to say? He okay, so his his uh wife, because yeah. I don't know if they are legally married. So I'll just say his his partner, his civil partner, called you and told you he was uh acting funny, he was a bit suicidal. Uh, is yeah. that correct? Yes, like he locked himself in the room. This was, after, this was after he made the video that I wanted to kill him. So and I was so concerned for him. So I called him to just try give him rest of mind. Like, what's the stress? If your um if your family is stressing you, how leave? I had that record, I recorded that down. I don't know why. I just find I just found it the other day. Then again, they said when I came back to Nigeria, I has to see him because I know he's been bugging now. I has to see him. He came. Um, luckily, I was recording that conversation too. I was just trying to see what's wrong with him. Because by this time, I didn't know what's wrong with him. I was trying to get help for him. Okay, well, you, you were recording the conversations because he had made that video, you know, um, alleging that you were after his life. Yes, and he was, and then again, he wanted to um, commit suicide again. So he oh. said, you understand? He said, B, I have to look after him. So in the video, I was just trying to find out what is wrong with him so I can um, be able to help. But he said it's only his mom and dad that understands what's wrong with him or something along the line of the video. So I said, okay, I'm gonna speak to, let, uh, let me speak to your mom and dad if they don't mind. He said, okay, that's when I went to his room, his mom and dad was in his room, I went to his room, which that's video that's going around, which they caught the part they want to. I went to his room to speak to him to speak to his parents to find out what's wrong. They said, yeah, the notice is not okay as well about something, something, but they need to take him to treat him or whatever. I said, no problem. I don't have an issue, but just make sure you protect him. Don't let him run out and start making noise in the middle of the night. Don't stress him out and uh, um, let him go with them. Okay, so you said you have a recording of that incident. Yes. Are you willing to play that recording live now? Are you, are you willing to play it for now, the whole world to hear? Um, I can play the one that's on um, my brother's phone. I can find one to play. I can play okay. one of the yeah, one. Yeah, go, ahead, go ahead and play because you see, you know, like this incident is not giving Nigeria a very good name and the whole world is fixated on it. So the more clarity we have, you know, the better for Nigeria, better for our music scene, our entertainment industry. So go ahead, play it. 
I can play one the one when I was in um America and this girl called me to okay. say um he wants to kill himself. Okay, yeah. play it. Can we hear her voice? Did she did she speak? That's like one I wish if you don't say. Well, very good happened to you. Now I'm only at it. Now I'm only at my name. Missing one of the one of the Can we hear her voice? Did she did she speak? I'm just looking after you. I need to look after you. I told you already. You shouldn't be stressed. Be free. Do what you want to do. And say what you want to say. Say it. If you say, Mummy, oh, yeah, my lord, that may be my wife, Joe. You need to go because say it. Be free. You wouldn't feel like. I know you said you feel like nobody likes you, Abby. But if nobody, if you, if you feel like, if you feel like nobody likes you, no reason for you to kill yourself. Do you get? Because they don't show, they don't show any that they don't like you. Because they don't prove that they don't want to like you. Here, you also feel very you no know, trust. You, it's something in the back of your mind that you raise. Is that the end? That's just one on the video. I was, I need something was probably wrong with me. I was just trying to get help, help him see what was wrong with him at the same time. That's one on the video. I have another video in my house for like 17 minutes. Okay. Him, and I was actually trying to see what was wrong. Okay. 